handmade wooden boxes, you probably think of something that looks like this. A box that's square or rectangular and that is joined with some kind of traditional joinery, in this case box joints, sometimes dovetails, sometimes miter joints. But even the simplest of these boxes requires quite a bit of care, time, and effort. Some people use jigs to ensure that everything lines up properly. Some people use a whole shop full of tools. But what if I told you that you can make beautiful, interesting, really eye-catching boxes far more simply and easily? What if I told you you could do these using only a scroll saw, a drill press, and a variety of the kind of sanders you find in the typical shop? Let me show you how you can do this. Let's start out with a simple pivot lid box. Cut out of a circle, pivoting on a small piece of eighth inch brass rod with a built-in stop here. This box is made beautiful through a careful choice of wood, in this case maple burl, dressed up with a little bit of maple veneer and some paduke for color. All right, quick and easy, very attractive, and you have an almost instant gift or project for a crafts fair. Another way to make boxes quickly and easily is to rely on some tools that most people have around, namely Forstner bits. Using Forstner bits can expedite things enormously, as in the case of this little jewelry box. We're using the, the appropriate size Forstner bits, eliminates a lot of sanding, prevents irregularities, and makes a box like this go really very, very quickly. Forstner bits can also be used to make attractive jewelry boxes, where in this case there's no base or lid. The top and bottom portions do it all. The hole is drilled to the appropriate depth, and a piece of velvet hides the characteristic hole that the point in the Forstner bit leaves. Or, how about a box that looks like a cupcake? This box, which comes in two versions, a regular little jewelry box, or a box with a ring insert, are made with a Forstner bit, a larger one for the outer circle, a smaller one for the recess, and the bottom of the cupcake is cut on a scroll, so cut at an angle, and then using a rather coarse, in this case a number seven spiral bit, which leaves a very wide kerf with a simple in and out motion, the characteristic ridges are created. Very quick, simple, easy, and you can do a whole bunch of them on one strip of wood before you cut them into pieces. Another, another way to make boxes without conventional joinery is to capitalize on typical bandsaw box construction. Here is a mini version of a typical bandsaw box. In this case it was made on a scroll saw, but the principle is the same. The drawers are an integral part of the box. You cut out either a piece of wood is put on the front and back, or it's sliced off the original piece of wood. All bandsaw boxes have a characteristic swirly look, which is necessitated by the way they're made, and the drawers tend to be round. Well, one day, looking at my kitchen cabinets, I realized that the drawer fronts here, the overlay drawer fronts, were put on a very simple box. And I said, well, why not try that with a bandsaw? So, my first project of this type 
was to make a little chest of drawers. If you look at it quickly, it looks very conventional. Nice beveled edges, you have a nice base and a top piece. However, if you take a drawer out, here's your bandsaw box construction. The, full, the overlay drawer hides the fact and makes it look very conventional. Encouraged by the success of this project, I took it one step further and covered the entire front with a full overlay. Here again, if we take the drawer out, you can see we have a little bandsaw box type drawer, which flocking gives a very nice finish on. Put it back in, and it looks more like dollhouse furniture than a jewelry box. It also gives a wonderful place for putting little personalized miniature objects, scans of books, pictures, and things like that. A very versatile kind of project. The last kind of construction that I'm going to discuss is based on cutting rings at a steep angle. This vase was made with a scroll saw. The rings were cut concentrically from a flat piece of wood, in this case one set for this part, one set for here, and separate rings for the top pieces, glued together and then sanded to emulate the look of a lathe turned piece. Using these principles, however, thinking of the stacked rings as a tool, not just as a way to make bowls, opens up a whole world. For example, if you look at the ripple top of this, as I did one day, I said, hmm, could be a pie crust. And my orange banana tart was born. If you look at the edges of this, you'll see that they're constructed in the same manner. This, of course, is much larger. And if you remove the lid of this, here we have a six-segment box. Again, no joinery, just very simple stacked ring construction. Taking this a step further, we come up with this elegant pumpkin-like box, which again is made from stacked rings. In this case, there's a flat ring in between to separate the two segments, but it is indeed a box. Again, no conventional joinery, but certainly a lovely and unusual project. We can also do things with stacked rings to avoid making difficult cuts with standard tools. When I designed my ice cream box, I needed a lip for this to rest on so it wouldn't flop around. By using rings of different width, a thicker ring for the bottom topped by a thinner ring on the top, it creates a natural occurring lip. Again, quickly and easily. My coffee cake, coffee cup box, coffee cakes are for the next, next round of boxes, is based on this approach too. The saucer is a single ring. The cup, if you look at it, looks like a little bowl. But if you open this up, in order to create a lip, and I would hate to have to think of routing this out, something that, that's this small and delicate, again, the same technique of using a thin ring on top of a thicker one, a wider one, creates a natural lip, and the lid just sits on there. These are just a few of the possibilities. I'm always creating new boxes, new bowls, based on the methods that I know and expanding them into new areas. And if you'd like to see what I'm up to or check out something new, take a look at my blog for some ideas. And I think you'll find that once you get used to thinking outside the box, the traditional kind of boxes, lovely as they are, 
start looking, in some cases, not quite as exciting as some of the other possibilities that are out there. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I hope it's given you some ideas for your own woodworking, and particularly for those of you who don't have a shop full of tools or are relatively new to the craft, the encouragement that with a little bit of time and care and some imagination, you too can make really beautiful boxes that will make people sit up and take notice. Thanks for watching.